A powerful work of art has a lasting effect on you, an effect that can alter your life. But sometimes you have to let it digest. You'll have moments throughout the mundaneness of a life where you will be dreaming about that masterpiece, that game that you just played that really had a lasting effect on you. Moments of the game will come to mind and you'll think, what if I did this differently? Or that part was just so awesome, I wish I could experience it again. We all have moments when our friend plays our favorite game and we get really excited for them because we know that, you know, that experience is, is fresh and new to them. And we can appreciate that and we all wish that we can go back to that time where we can experience that again. Gaming is a beautiful vector for experiencing life-altering works of art in the comfort of our own home. So you've experienced this impactful game, but what do you play next? For me, I like to play games that help me digest. Transitional games or the in-between games that are meant to provide you with comfort and dopamine while not requiring that much from you. I have played a lot of good games lately, um, but the one that has really stuck with me and the one that I still keep thinking about and literally when I'm at work, when I'm playing a game, when I'm just chilling, just, you know, kind of daydreaming. It's a Baldur's Gate 3. That's the one. The game just really left a lasting impression on me. The only other CRPG that I have played is Divinity Original Sin 2, which is also made by Larian Studios. And although my Steam page for it says otherwise, I really didn't get that deep into the game. Now in this video, I won't spoil anything about Baldur's Gate 3, but just know that there's just so many different variations and ways of playing the game that even today, people are making the wildest challenge runs. And I just love seeing the way the systems interact with the players and how the system breaks based off of someone that has played the game for far too long. Baldur's Gate 3 really is an outlier and I'm just really glad I played it. So let's make a deal. Throughout this video, I'll give you the genre of games that are my in-between games. And while you watch, think about what games you enjoy playing during this transitional period and share it with us. Based on my extensive research of just being myself, I have discovered four genres that I find fit perfectly into the idea of an in-between game. Uh, that'll be Horde Survivors, Frick. MMORPGs, Farming Sims, and Survival Games. I want to iron out why I chose those genres and what my go-to games are for each. Let's go. Horde Survivors is a cool mixture of auto battlers slash bullet hells and a little bit of roguelike elements. This juicy blend of video game genres was popularized by Vampire Survivors back in 2022. It's not only popular with gamers, but also developers, as it's a fairly easy foundation to start from and the amount of variation you can build on it is insane. The deeper you go into the Horde Survivors genre, the more you see that fact. You've got games like Brotato, which has a multitude of stats, characters, items, danger levels, and a shop where you can purchase items after each wave. Bone Rise Minions, where you play as a necromancer that summons up these skeleton bros to help you fight off villagers and various other entities. The vast array of spells and relics. A talent system that can be used to upgrade the amount of enemies that spawn. How your skeleton bros interact with the world. Special abilities that you can use, like dash and increase health and pickup range. And the reason why I think this genre is a great example of an in-between game is for a couple of reasons. Each run is fairly short, maybe 30 minutes max. The whole auto-shooter part is a big factor. Removing the mechanical skill required to kill baddies lets you chill and watch as your character becomes increasingly more overpowered. Now a lot of people that put a lot of stock into that mechanical skill, that part, that being part of being able to aim and all that, they might be turned off by this idea and that's totally fine. They do allow you in most of these games to turn on manual shooting, so if you still like that you can do that. The variety in each run is huge. Like I said previously, since the foundation of Horde Survivors is so easy to make, developers can add so much depth to the game that gives it a lot of replayability. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever beaten this game, I'll be honest with you. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games. An absolute cornerstone of gaming. And every single time a new one comes out, everyone says, That's the WoW killer. Oh yeah, that one is definitely killing WoW. And yet, 8.1 million people still play World of Warcraft today. I have played MMORPGs since I was a wee lass. I was first introduced to them by my uncle. I would sit next to him for hours watching him raid Molten Core in Vanilla WoW, or running around Stranglethorn Vale ganking random people. Whenever he had to take a break or go to work or university, I would ask him if I can play, and every single time I would just play for hours on end and I had a deep dive into World of Warcraft. In a lot of ways, that game shaped how I view gaming in general because it was the first time I really interacted with people online. But anyway, I digress. MMORPGs are great in-between games because they host a ton of side activities and things that you can do at your own pace. 
My darling, sweetheart, baby MMORPG is Guild Wars 2. I've always thought that if I had a billion dollars and I had an infinite amount of time, I would spend all of it in Guild Wars 2. The game is just so incredibly immersive and it lets you decide what you want to do. It's not needy, it has evergreen systems, so your previous progress actually means something. And the community is pretty awesome too. Whenever I need an in-between game, I always go to Guild Wars 2. I mount up on my roller beetle and just go around the maps collecting materials to sell and listen to chill music while enjoying the world and accomplishing the goals at the same time. I've been saying this for years, but Guild Wars 2 is the best MMORPG ever made. Period. A farming simulator is a type of simulation video game that allows players to manage and operate a farm. Crazy, right? I mean, we all know this, but Stardew Valley just clears all the farming games, right? It single-handedly holds down the genre and has really redefined it as well. And although I'm kind of like a new person to this game, I just kind of pl started playing it recently, it really is a perfect in-between game. It doesn't demand much of anything from you, which gives you a lot of space to chill and focus on one thing at a time and dream of your masterpiece game. There's always some to do in Stardew Valley too, only really being limited by the time of each day in game. And I'm always in the market honestly, Stardew Valley has really opened me up to, to farming simulators so if you have any ideas or any farming simulators that you like, let me know. Most survival games stop being about survival once you know everything about it. The upside of this is that it gives you the ultimate freedom to do whatever you can dream of in the vast open world. Zooming in a bit more, I am speaking on the base building side of survival games specifically. After all, there's always a more optimized way of building your base and you can always make it exactly how you want it to. This is nice to do as much of the task requires you to mostly perform the same action over and over. Going out, gathering materials, placing down structures, and so on. These mundane tasks inevitably cause you to daydream about other stuff. Baldur's Gate 3 kind of stuff. Subnautica, Valheim, Minecraft, Terraria, Seven Days to Die, and the list goes on. Even though there's a large selection of survival games, the one I always go back to whenever I want to chill and just build stuff is Minecraft. We all know Minecraft, you know, and even though I'm not as in tuned with the game as I once was when it first kind of came out, I haven't really played all too much. There are moments when I'm kind of bored and I don't really want to do anything but just build stuff and I kind of want to just like be in a world and that game is just perfect for that it's perfect for just chilling and just being in a world and then it causes you as I've mentioned in the other parts of this video where it causes you to think about like you know the fun game um for me for example it's Baldur's Gate 3 just thinking about all the interesting ways that the game could end and how I wish I had infinite amounts of time to experience all those endings um but even just appreciating the fact that they even added all those additional things that maybe a lot of people won't even see it's just beautiful it's just it just makes me so excited and glad that i bought the game and i experienced it and i've probably experienced it way more than others because i've just watched so many videos about it the common thread between these games is that they just open up space for you to enjoy them without demanding a lot from you there's not a lot of neediness there there's not a not, not a lot of like oh you have to log in every single day to get this thing or get that you just play hey man if you want to play you just come in play the game for a little bit go off and that's a perfect in-between game it doesn't demand anything from you it's just something to do while you're kind of like dreaming of the masterpiece you're kind of thinking about all the great things that you experience in that game and discussing it with your friends or whatever while kind of just playing this game on the side. You know, we've all experienced games that have left a lasting effect on us. Games that put us in a brand new genre or that revitalize our love for one of our favorite ones. Nevertheless, finding an in-between game to play during that time period after beating a masterpiece is crucial in order for you to feel refreshed and ready to play your next one in my opinion. If you don't have an in-between game and this video was your first exposure to that idea, then I hope I gave you some ideas on what might mesh well with you. I urge you as someone that enjoys video games to find a genre that you can play while chilling and daydreaming about the masterpiece that shape your hobby. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Axo. Um, I make videos every Tuesday about a various array of topics and ideas. Um, if you want, feel free to subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you dislike it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye Juicy and alien feel like a big bro. Nice.